right hello everyone and welcome to worship today hello everyone hello. Hello. Okay. <laughs> we are blessed to worship all of you today every single one of you and first of all you're about to say and first of all we are just ordinary folks who believe God's love is for everyone no matter who you are or how you self-identify, God's love is for everyone. <coughs> Bible study continues this Tuesday, and I'm going to sing a song, <laughs> January 30th at 7 o'clock. And it's about, it's online or in person. We continue to study about bad girls. Now, don't make me sing bad girls. <laughs> bad girls. Now, I, that's why they, they took the mic away from me. Oh. Yeah. I, I started singing things that they didn't want me to sing. Oh, Talking right. about bad girls. Of the Bible. Of oh, the Bible. Of oh, the Bible. Oh, the Bible. No, January 28th and February 11th, we will meet after worship on both days for the interest meeting. This will be a time where folks can learn more about the various ministries of the church. Or some that we don't have written down yet. We have, we're open to listen to everybody about that. From helping during worship to helping in children's church, this is a great opportunity to just learn more. No commitments, no requirements. Just showing up for 30 minutes to learn more about being a part of helping your church. And there will be, there will be food. Okay, and that was with exclamation point at the end. <clears throat> okay. Um, but yeah, that uh, be sure to show up for that. We need people. We need people in there helping and doing and just spreading the word and having fun with our church. Okay, and today is our monthly birthday celebration and fellowship gathering. Please join us after worship for fun, food, and fellowship. I guess Rhonda has her cake today. Yes. Yes, yes we have cake. Yes. Thank you for being here today. Let's continue worshiping as we share the peace of Christ. Oh, wait. I'm oh, sorry. Opening music. That was my fault, though. Sorry. She admits it. No. Yep. <laughs> bad girl, bad girl. That's right. That's right. Step by step. I should have known. We did this last week. And I love the song. Self-identify. 
god's love is for you would you turn to somebody and say god's love is for you god's love is for you keep going tell somebody else god's love is for you god's love is for you hey out there in cyberland out there in cyberland god's love is for you I just thought I'd tell y'all that in case y'all didn't know. Um, uh, the thing about the announcements, though, I scheduled something, and I tried to kind of sidestep my double booking. Um, uh, today was one of the information days for the uh, for the ministry stuff, the helping out in church. So I'll tell you what. I've got some things I can share with you if you're interested in learning about what uh, we offer Okay, because there's lots of stuff. It doesn't seem like it. I know we're small, but we're mighty, and we have a lot of things that we um, that we we do here. It doesn't seem like it, but it is. And uh, thank you for being here today. I appreciate you. I love you. If you know it's coming, more importantly, God loves you, and that is amazing to me. I never, I, it never ceases to amaze me how much God loves me. And it's not that I'm such a sinner. It's that God's love is so extravagant. You know what I mean? Yeah. God's love is amazing. Oh, my goodness. I love it. Well, with all that being said, the peace of Christ be with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. What? And, and also, also with you. you. Oh, that's beautiful. Don't forget to talk to somebody on the cyberland. Go love on somebody. <laughs> hey, everybody. It is awesome, awesome to join you in worship, with you in worship today. I pray that you are doing well. I hope that you are um, just well. Know that God loves you. Know that we love you. We miss you when you are not here. And uh, for those who are going to watch this at another time, thank you for you. Thank you for joining us in worship. And we would love to hear from you, either in the chat thread or just emailing the church or calling somebody up, texting something. We'd love to hear how you do that. We love you. We love you. Bye, y'all. Thanks, goodbye. See you later. Oh, peace of Christ to all of you for all of you that are trying to be in while you're not in church. But please, if you're distant, so, yeah, thank you for being here. Thank you, words. thank you, thank you. Peace of Christ for all of you. Very careful yeah. because they're peace very of compassionate, very loving, just a very good song.
our prayers and praises today let's start with our prayers let's start with our prayers first of all some of you have seen on Facebook I'm gonna be a little selfish for a minute have seen us post about our family Christine's mom and Christine's uncle with health issues medical issues so we have prayers for them her aunt is struggling quite a bit with the medical issues with her uncle the other thing is many of you know or have at least seen know of our friends Reba and Ken they sat right there where Tracy's sitting at my ordination service and Reba passed away and the husband is just broken the family they lost Reba and Ken lost a granddaughter not too long ago so the family is devastated twice over and so in prayers I ask for prayers for for Ken and the family does anyone else have any prayers we want to lift up any of these I have a friend who's experiencing some very serious health issues and he's come in prayer and Catherine has a friend who's experiencing some serious health issues any other prayers Laura I'll pray for myself I've got also medical related have some unknown I'm having some issues and I don't know what's causing them I'm going to an appointment this week and hopefully these can figure out some answers but just prayer for resolution and you know comfort because this has been very uncomfortable the stuff I've been dealing with prayers Laura if you didn't hear that Laura is asking for prayers for resolution answers comfort peace for some issues that she doesn't know what's causing them you're welcome yes ma'am Heidi and Sandra are both sick today so prayers for them and also we have a friend who has to go for a second pap smear because his first one did not come out well so prayers for them so Heidi and Sandra are sick today and then the friend with the pap smear and yeah in case the reason I'm repeating it is because I don't know if the folks in Cyberland can hear or not I ask for prayers for a person I don't have permission to share their name but their month of January is very 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 busy and like don't know whether you know you're gonna scratch your watch or wind your ear kind of busy and I ask prayers for that person any other prayers how about some praises we got some praises we got some praises Ben Yes, um, I've had a rough time here lately. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to praise my Becky Dwayne and his wife Michelle. That's her mother. She mm -hmm. took me out to eat. She doesn't want to clean my house. She wants me to pray. Yeah. And my nephew has to step in the house. And I just thank the Lord for this. That's beautiful. So ben, ben has praises for his nephew and niece. Mm -hmm. His niece, wife. Niece in law. Yeah. <laughs> um, for their service to him. Yeah. doing various things and keeping him company mm -hmm. yeah that's beautiful mm -hmm. that's absolutely beautiful um, I pray that my great nephew won the uh, first place in the tournament yesterday yeah. yes yeah, he's doing really well and I'm proud of him he's a senior this year so yeah. what's the tournament uh, it, was that, it was wrestling high school wrestling. wrestling tournament at Glenbury yesterday so yeah. he's been doing really well I'm proud of him yeah that's beautiful um, Cyberland might not have heard that Preston Preston, Joanna's um, nephew, won first place in the wrestling tournament at the high school, Glenville High School, yesterday. So that's cool. That's Not only is he a good wrestler, he is an excellent human. He's, so he's a good human. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. That's cool. They don't come out better than Preston. That's awesome. That's awesome. It's nice to know he's a good man. I mean, I've already heard it, but I thought I saw a hand yeah. here. Yeah. Praises for nicer weather. Even though it's raining, we're not freezing it out. Woohoo! Yeah. And along uh, nice those lines, it's great to see more people here today, probably because the weather let up a little bit. Probably, yeah. And uh, Praise is the house that we're helping to work on. Uh, she's been very patient while we, we both had the flu and are recovering. We're both getting better every day. 
My voice is coming back, but I can't get sing. It'll probably be another month or two, but it's coming back. Yeah. Much to Mo's chagrin. <laughs> and, um, but anyway, um, anyway, it's going well with the house. Working with a whole lot of nice contractors, and that's unusual. Yeah. Oh, <gasps> I did not say that. Anyway, no. So anyway, your voice is good people. We are. Good, good people, people seems to be a theme today. Good people. Good. People. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Kathy got lots of praises. How much? Kathy got lots of praises. Sure. Liz. Yesterday, my. Uh, <clears throat> <coughs> <coughs> added prayers to anyone coming up and down Bent Mountain because of the weather change. They had rocks on the road. Oh, um, no. But it, I hope it was clear by now. Praise the speed. People kept informing each other. On right, this one. Right. So Good. the praise is that they came down from the mountain so they could watch their, my son-in-law's brother, youngest brother, also was in a tournament for wrestling. He's middle school. And he's got the, the height, he's got the right build, and he's very, very, very good. And it was like, he was going to win, he was going to win. He's like 5-0. and oh. And then he got a little cocky. Oh. <laughs> In wrestling, it's a mental game as well as a physical oh. one. So anyway, the good news is that he goes along. But I got a chance to be with my daughter, good. my good. granddaughter, and Ethan, who watched the baby run off in her yellow Ugg shoes. <laughs> and so Liz has Liz has prices for clear roads and being able to see family. Oh, it was fun. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I have praise for a birthday that was just this past week. Twenty nine and holy. Do what? Yeah, let's do birthday song. Yeah. Everybody. Who is that person? Maybe Christine, but happy birthday to everybody. Everybody. Right. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to everybody. everybody. Hey, Christine. Happy birthday to you. Y'all know I'm in the doghouse, right? <laughs> It is, baby. I hope the dog horse is warm. Dog horse is warm. <laughs> oh, boy, the shed is warm. Are there any unspoken prayers? Any unspoken praises? Because I'm going to include those in there, too. You know the deal. Look around. You know the deal. We have an opportunity to lift each other up. And out there in Cyberland, and even those here present, if you might not have seen that hand, let me tell you, pray for the church. Just pray for the church. God knows what it is. We should be praying for our church, y'all. We should be praying for our church every day. And sometimes we just say, if you don't have the words, Lord, you know the heart. I'm praying for the church today. God knows what we need. Speak in English. Let's go to God. Loving God, thank you for today for another opportunity to come together and worship you, to share the things that are burdening our heart, to share the things that lift up our heart, to share in the fact that you love us so extravagantly, Lord. To quote someone very wise, you love us so much that we, we need buckets and barrels to hold it all, and even then we need some more. Thank you for your blessings, Lord. Thank you for your love. For the many prayers, Lord, the medical issues, Lord, folks who have lost loved ones, folks who are just busy, overwhelmed, continue to be, but let's be peace. For birthdays, for heat, for, oh Lord, for good people for examples that we can look to. Thank you, Lord. For those things and so much more, we ask, Lord, that you would just hold them to your heart. When we weep, wipe away our tears, and when we have joy, dance with us. Just be with the prayers that praise us, Lord. In your holy, precious name. to that.
time in our new service for offering. Thank you. Um, so I am going to share um, just a brief parable that I feel like God put on my heart to share with you all today. Um, this is from Luke 18, um, starting at verse 9. Um, to some who are confident of their own righteousness and look down on everyone else, Jesus told this parable. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and give a tenth of all I get. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He would not even look up to heaven, but beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. I tell you that this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Um, so I have been sitting here for a while, sitting here, and also I spent a good chunk of time this morning thinking, like, why am, how am I supposed to relate that to the offering? Because I didn't know <coughs> quite what this was um, supposed to, how this was supposed to relate. I know this was for sure, I know this was how it was supposed to relate. So, um, But I realize now, as I'm reading it, I think um, I know that I myself tend to become um, complacent, I think, especially um, in my walk sometimes, and I tend to rest on my laurels, so to speak. Uh, and I think that includes um, kind of just holding tight to the material things that I have. And, um, you know, as we are called as believers to hold um, onto nothing but Christ, you know, to count everything as loss, um, but Christ and Him crucified. And so um, I think one way that we can practice that is by letting go, you know, emotionally, you know, spiritually, but also physically of the things that we have. Um, and I know that's something that I really struggle with, and so I expect that might be other people might also struggle with that. So hopefully hearing <coughs> it um, is encouraging for you all today. And in the spirit of that, um, we'll collect the offering. So um, I encourage you to um, give as you're feeling led. Uh, we have the basket that will come around. We also have a PayPal option. Um, we can send a check in. So um, yeah, please uh, give as you're feeling led. Thank you. So I see 
Scripture reading for today is Psalms 111. Praise the Lord. I will extol the Lord with all my heart in the counsel of the upright and in the assembly. Great are the works of the Lord. They are pondered by all who delight in them. Glorious and majestic are his deeds, and his righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wonders to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and compassionate. He provides food for those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. He has shown his people the power of his works, given them the lands of other nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever, enacted in faithfulness and uprightness. He provides redemption for his people. He ordained his covenant forever, holy and awesome in his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who follow his precepts have good understanding. To him belongs eternal praise. From the Gospel, Mark 1, 21 to 28. They went to Capernaum, and when Sabbath came, Jesus went into the synagogue and began to teach. The people were amazed at his teachings because he taught them as one who had authority, not as the teachers of law. But then a man in his synagogue who was possessed by an impure spirit cried out, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Be quiet, said Jesus sternly. Come out of him. The impure spirit shook the man violently and came out of him with a shriek. The people were all so amazed that they asked each other, What is this? A new teaching and with authority? He even gives orders to impure spirits and they obey him. News about him spread quickly over the whole region of Galilee. Y'all let me know about that now. Sometimes I try to come up with things that will get folks' attention. Sometimes it works and sometimes it don't. It worked today. It worked today. <coughs> All right. So, holy CPR. I'll get to that in a minute. 
there was a, a movie once. It, it's not one of my favorite ones. Um, I guess I can say the name, The, the Princess Bride. And there's a scene in there where something happens and the main character gets paralyzed. Y'all remember that's, okay, you're looking at me like I've got three heads. But there's a part where he somehow gets paralyzed. And over the course of this part of the movie, like eventually he gets his, you know, this eye starts twitching and his eyes come back, okay? He, he gets the correct vision. And his arm, he's trying to move his arm. Eventually this arm, and then this arm, and then this leg, and then this leg. So he's paralyzed. And the funny thing is, is trying to, you know, get the feeling. You ever had that? Like, you feel like you're, you, you sit wrong, or your foot's wrong, and you got the tingling in there, and then after, you know, you try to beat it. Like, what the heck is beating your foot going to do? But you ever felt like you've been paralyzed with that thing? Your foot goes to sleep or whatever. I bet some people wish my mouth would go to sleep. That's all right. Um, but eventually, it comes back to life, right? It gets, back, we, it gets back its full mobility. And in today's scripture, we find a somewhat similar story of getting the life back, revived. The Gospel of Mark, well, it was written before 70 AD. Some of y'all know that that's the, the date of the destruction of the temple. Uh, it was written in Rome. In Rome, There was a, a cloud of, there was this thing happening in Jerusalem where people felt like something bad was coming, right? And destruction and doom. And so one of the purposes of the book of Mark was uh, to speak to the Gentiles who didn't know the customs of the time, like the Jewish folks. Another one was to prepare the Christians for that looming doom. And the big picture of the book is that it reveals two things. Number one, it reveals Jesus' identity as the Messiah and Son of God, and it reveals Jesus' mission in the world. So, I want to fast forward a little bit, because Mark, Mark takes one chapter and, it, I mean, the whole book is real short. He takes one chapter, and this is what he does. All right? So he, he reminds us about the prophecy in Isaiah, the coming Messiah. John the Baptist comes. Jesus is baptized. He's tempted in the wilderness. He proclaims the arrival of the good news, and he calls his first delight, disciples, and they leave for Galilee. All in the first chapter. So now Jesus and the disciples are headed to Capernaum. It's the Sabbath. And Jesus goes into the, into the synagogue and begins to teach. <coughs> wow. Now, I would imagine Jesus was addressing many things, okay? Everything from why he would call everyday folk, like the uneducated fisherman, or the tax collector who was seen as the scourge of society. Scourge? Scourge? They were seen as not so nice guys. In society. And he, he may have even talked about, well, it doesn't really matter what he talked about. We don't know what he talked about. We just know that people were amazed. And I can only imagine how the religious leaders felt. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was a, a music teacher at one time, though you never know it today. Um, it, it's kind of like, Someone who doesn't know anything about music or special education or English trying to come in and teach your class. Mm -hmm. Now we are we have the gift of hindsight and it's 2020. But the bigger picture here is not that Jesus didn't know what he was talking about, because he did. He amazed people. And I would assume, and rightfully so, that the scribes were paying attention. They were listening. See, the scribes were the big wigs. They were the teachers of the law that <coughs> Scripture talked about. And immediately, immediately, they didn't care to Jesus. He was a threat. He was a threat to them. I mean, yeah, he was a threat. They were the big wigs. And here comes this person catching people's eye. Then it happens. A man is in the temple. And he cries out. What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? 
I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Now that must have been pretty scary. I mean, look, if somebody, you know, if, if Patty fell out on the floor and started screaming, I'd probably <coughs> jump out of my skin. <laughs> I'd be scared to death. Patty, what's going on? I mean, I gotta tell this little story. Uh, one one evening, it was about ten o'clock at night or something, and I'm sitting at the kitchen table. Wind is open. It's nice outside, and I hear this. And I about fell out the chair. Yes, it was. <laughs> Boy, that doghouse is looking pretty good right now. <laughs> anyway, it scared the mess out of me. So I can only imagine, by the way, this guy that was possessed by this impure spirit, how in the world he got inside the temple to begin with is beyond me. I mean, he must have been so intertwined with that spirit Folks just probably thought that's who he was. So the spirit cries out. Oh, man. And he didn't just cry out. The man shook violently. You see, one of the things I, I just mentioned about him being intertwined what, with the spirit was that in my research, it was that the man was in the impure spirit, not the impure spirit in him. The translation was that he was in, in other words, here's the point. He was fully wrapped up in the spirit. It's, not like, it's like he wasn't really a man anymore. It was the spirit. And he just happened to be <coughs> the shell. Now I know that I know that demon possession and impure spirit possession, it's hard to talk about that, y'all. And when I saw that in today's lectionary, I was like, no, uh-uh. Holy Spirit's like. Really? What? No, no, no. I just want to go to this nice, comfortable psalm and talk about that. No. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. It makes me cringe. It made me cringe. This man's entire identity was wrapped up in the spirit. And my question to us today is, do we know who we are? What is our identity? It could be many things. One of my favorite songs is a country song from a few years back. And it goes, I am Rosemary's granddaughter, the spitting image of my father. And when the day is done, my mom is still my biggest fan. Sometimes I'm clueless and I'm clumsy. But I've got friends that love me. And they know just where I stand. It's all a part of me. And that's who I am. <coughs> I love that. And every time I hear that, I take out Rosemary and I put in... Lucy. That was her nickname. Her real name was Ruby. I am the spitting image of my father, and even though my mom has passed, she's still my biggest fan. But you see, in all of that, that tells me who I am. I am also a teacher. I am also attempting to be a preacher. I am also attempting to be a good friend. I am attempting to be a follower of Jesus. I am a lesbian. I am who I am. God has created me that way. So my question is, do you know who you are? You know I'm going to ask this question. I'm going to ask you to tell me. Do you know who you are? Somebody want to volunteer who you think you are? I'm sure you are. born want to know. Who wants to volunteer? Anybody? You want to be volunteered? Yeah, <laughs> My hand went right up, didn't it? It did. I saw it. <laughs> so fast, no one could see it. I'm God's child. Amen. And God's friend. And warts and all. Yep. If that makes any it sense. It does. And I could be other things. I'm related to certain family and certain friends. Right. And some people might identify me by different activities or jobs. Right. But first and foremost, I'm God's kid. That's right. You're my wife. Yes. Oh, oh, oh my goodness. She liked me. No, no dog. Yeah. Yeah. Document it. Document it. That's on video. <laughs> I mean, there's so many. Okay, so I, yeah. Thank you, Kathy. Liz. My name is Elizabeth, and it means child of God. Amen. So I have been working on that for a long time. Yes, and, and claiming that and is claiming God. Claiming it. Yeah. I am definitely filled with the Holy Spirit. Yes, it's, that is beautiful. It sometimes forget that, but it's yeah. not. 
forgettable when it's there. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's hard um, in our life to remind ourselves. And I know I said earlier about being a sinner. Well, yeah, the Bible does say that we've all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But the thing that I remind myself about that is that God's love is extravagant. God knew me before I was even formed in my mama's womb. God calls me beloved. God has called me God's child. Now, about this gentleman that was possessed, I can't begin to, to, to fathom how the possessed man lived his life knowing the spirit was in him. Did he even know? Did he even know it had taken control of his life? Did he know the depth of it? Was he really just the shell of a man? Was he dead inside? You know what? I can't begin to fathom how he, like I said, how he made it into the temple. But Jesus knows who Jesus is and how all power and authority has been given to him by God even though he won't share this publicly for a little while yet. But today he shows it. And in the scripture today, he shows it. And he answers the question of Jesus' authority. He shows his authority to cast out demons. He shows his authority to teach. He shows his authority to reach out to his child of God. And with a loud voice, he shows that authority. I, I'm not going to scream and yell, even though the, I can see Jesus with that stern, come out. If you've ever seen CPR done, oh my goodness. It's, it can be violent. And this man shook violently. There's a machine, when I was a chaplain, it was called a Lucas. Don't ask me what L-U-C-A-S stands for, because I forgot a long time ago. But it's a machine that does CPR more effectively than human hands. Okay? And when you see, if you've ever seen CPR done, it, it, it will make you cringe. And so Jesus did some holy CPR. That man, that spirit left that man. Man. He brought him back to life. The man, I'm sure he was dead inside. Jesus restarted his heart. And that makes me want to jump out of my skin in a positive way. Bam! The people saw it. Jesus teaching authority and now his healing with authority. And Jesus is going to become a rock star. Because word spreads quickly all over Galilee about this Jesus this teacher and healer. And today, I wonder what's inside us that needs to be brought back to life. What holy CPR do we need? Do we feel lifeless? Like our purpose has ebbed away. Do we feel lost with no direction? Do we feel like we're just going through the motions? Do we feel disconnected from God, each other, and ourselves? Maybe these, we feel these things because we are in a transition period. But what is it that God is doing to prepare us during this transition for what's about to come? Saints, maybe God is doing CPR on this church. But the cool thing about CPR is that once it starts, that life starts to come back. The thing about CPR is that the bringing back to life now depends on the person who receives that life and what they do with it. When I had my heart attack, they didn't have to do CPR, but the doctor said, Ronnie, you gotta make some changes. I received what happened in that heart attack. Even though I've gained almost all that weight back, I still am very careful about some of the certain foods I take and take in my medicines. The CPR is happening, and the life is coming. The life is coming back into us and into this church, and wow. I know that the CPR, it's supposed to be temporary, right? It's meant to revive us. 
Yesterday is only a memory. But it's all a part of us. Always. Tomorrow is but a dream. And we should be beyond the CPR stage of thinking. All we have is right now in this very moment. God is doing the CPR. My question is, are we going to accept it? We have an opportunity to allow Jesus to bring life direction, meaning, connection, and purpose to us. How are we going to do that? Be open and willing for what to happen in the first place. Recognize our need to be enlivened again. Read, study, pray, join in worship so that we might know the character of God, each other, and even our own self. Step out in faith. Live out our faith. Hold strong to that faith knowing that God is reviving us. God is doing some holy CPR. This week, may we allow God to work. May we allow God to revive us once again. Amen. Amen. Cyberland, you've heard me say it a hundred times, well, since February of last year, that this is your opportunity to grab cracker, juice, water, Diet Coke, chicken finger, whatever it is that you need to join us in communion today. You know, when I was thinking about communion this morning, and that enlivened, that revival, that revived, that bringing of life. And I was reminded of that. I wonder if that was on Jesus' mind. <coughs> I'm sorry. But that the opposite of being alive is going to happen. But you see, that gift of hindsight is that we know, we know that in the end, it happened. Because during that meal, we are reminded of the gift of God's love. We are reminded that death is not the end all be all. At some point in that meal, Jesus took bread from the table. He lifted it to heaven. He gave thanks for it. He blessed it. Then he broke it. He said, this is my body broken, literally opened up for you. Take and eat of it, each of you. And in the same manner, <coughs> excuse me, please forgive me. He lifted the cup. He blessed it. He gave thanks for it. And he said, this is my blood shed for you as a sign of a new and everlasting covenant for the forgiveness of sins. And each time you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, do so in remembrance of me. Loving God, thank you for these symbols of your love. A love that enlivens us. A love a love that brings us purpose and identity in you. May these symbols, may these gifts continually remind us of your love. Amen. And in this church, we proclaim the mystery of our faith by saying, Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ is coming again.